Already? Good morning, Oakville. Good to see you. How y'all doing? D do we have any blues fans in the house? Blues? Oh, maybe. They, they might just do it today. Who, kno who knows? Who knows? So good that you chose to uh, join us this morning. Exciting place to be here at Oakville this time. And I'm um, going to ask for you to all stand. As soon as we sing our call to worship, Hosanna, praise is rising.
morning. We go to the Lord in prayer, prayer, please. Lord, in Jesus' life, to thank you for this day, Lord. And Lord, we have uh, certain individuals within our family that are going through some issues, whether it be medical or just disruption within the family. If you could be with those people, Lord, and heal those. Lord, cannot thank you both enough for everything that you have done for us and continue to do for us. And Lord, I especially ask you to watch over our church family. Some of the decisions that we are going to be making, some of the some of the road that we may be traveling, Lord, may be a little difficult. But please give us the guidance and the encouragement to continue to grow our family. And these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome to everyone. On behalf of First Baptist Church of Oakland, we welcome each of you, especially if you are visiting with us first time or the first time in a long time. If you would, take the time to fill out the flap on the bulletin, tear it off, and put it in the offering plate as it's passed later on. Also, there's a place for prayer needs in that. Um, those that may not know anything about us, we love God, we love each other, and we love you. And there's something else that's a little bit special about us. We're a little bit different than all the other churches because we are. We like to welcome each other. Uh, this morning we're going to be singing the When the Saints Go Marching In. Do anyone, everyone been, anyone ever been to a blues game? They, they kind of sing this and kind of do it. After. We're going we're to do that, but uh, feel free to, to sing as we uh, greet each other. So uh, just sort of a connection there. So join as we sing when the saints go marching in and greet those around us. Would be more steady when the saints go marching.
time I think we have a, uh, a special uh, announcement presentation right. and Brenda has an announcement uh, so Brenda if you come on down too and <laughs> Good morning. I don't know if you know what this is. This is a, but it's a bottle a little bit bigger than what I give my grandchildren, but. <laughs> but no, um, I just wanted to let everybody know. Uh, two weeks from today, we're at the WM group, WMU group, ladies. We're having a baby shower, and all the gifts will benefit the Missouri Baptist Children's Home. Um, it, we're going to meet at one o'clock, right after the service, and uh, there's more details in the bulletin. But join us for food, fun games, uh, most importantly, praying for the babies and the children, the families, and the uh, workers that are uh, providing this mission. So please join us. And in, in the bulletin, it has some suggestions on gifts that you can bring. And then it also, I think, states that you bring them unwrapped. So make it in two weeks if you can. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You know what? You fill that with Coke Zero, that might work. <laughs> I'll get him one. <laughs> Next week's Father's Day. <laughs> well, WMU stands for Women's Missionary Union. And our Women's Ministry Committee uh, has uh, on our church calendar on June the 29th to have a Let's Touch Base coffee here at church. We have a speaker coming from Union, Missouri. Her name is Brenda Poinsett. I have uh, heard her before. She's a Christian speaker and an author of some books. Uh, she's looking forward to being with us. I've talked with her just this past week. And I'm excited for what she's, the message that she's going to be bringing us. We say coffee because at 9 o'clock in the morning, we're still thinking, eh, yeah, we're kind of going to need coffee. So <laughs> coffee, juice, fruit, rolls, muffins, whatever that you would think of in that realm of thinking. Hot and, tea? Um, hot tea? Yes, hot tea. Yes. I may want to come. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> We handed out uh, last week, I think, uh, I've got one left that's got an actual mug rub. Is there somebody here that wasn't here to receive an invitation to that that would like to have a mug rub? Everybody go. All right, well, I do, I do have some other invitations here that are about six that are, you can hand out with friends. You can ask them to invite them to come with you on that Saturday morning. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet out front on the poster, if you would, just so that we'd have an idea of how many places to have set that day. Uh, that's the, the main thing. There's going to be some special music that day and a good time in the Lord. So it'll be from 9 till 11.30. And it's fast dress. It's a Saturday morning. So just come on down and sign up, if you would. Right now we've got 23 signed up, and I'd like to see several more that would be willing to come and spend their morning with us here in God's house and listening to a good message uh, from a good speaker. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, today is a special day on two or three different levels. Of course, as you see at the top of your bulletin, it is Pentecost Sunday, and I'll be addressing that in my message later. But it's also, uh, there, there are a lot of comings and goings in our church family right now. We have several folks that are away for this weekend. As you look around the room and you see folks that aren't here, they're traveling. And of course, the high school band is on their way back. I believe they'll be coming back either tomorrow or Tuesday. And I was talking with Dixie, coming back Tuesday. And Dixie's saying that George and Jim and Doug, I believe it's Doug, are, they'll also be back tomorrow night, Tuesday night. 
Tuesday night, late Tuesday evening. So we've got several folks that are coming back from France, and uh, we want to be in prayer for them. But the other comings and goings that I want to talk about are children, nine children, which, by the way, I don't remember us ever having more than that. Since I've been here, at least, that was a good group this year. Nine children and five chaperones um, that, uh, that went to Camp Penuel this past week. They got home safely on Friday. And Dean, thank you for taking them and going and getting them. And then uh, this coming week, our youth are going to Hannibal for a week of, I'm sorry? I, I didn't hear you. Oh, it's another week before you go. All right. So I beg your pardon. I misunderstood. I thought it was this coming week. So anyway, children, are back and uh, uh, let's see. Stand up, Katie. All right, Sam. They've got their camp. Come on down. Let them, let them have a, a bird's eye view. Thanks to Tony and Jim Box, we're putting you all on TV for all the world to see. Your All right. And Katie wanted to say just a word or two about that, and we'd like very much to hear about Kim. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you. Uh, a couple of people before they came and said we're pr they're praying for us, and thank you. It was really a uh, blessing went swimming and they did paddle boats and all kinds of fun stuff. also went to chapel and they reused a, a previous VBS theme in the wild and they talked about some things like Jesus walking on the water his miracle baptism and just how you know how sometimes life rocks the, mo rocks the boat but if you keep your eyes on God and keep walking it'll be alright and most of the kids were saved before but girls were saying uh, baptized so that a really good big step and got seriously hurt uh, one of our counselors did leave early but just again thank you for all your prayers it was a great trip and I have pictures and the Camp Penuel Facebook has so if you're a parent of a child camp and you'd like those pictures please come see me or Pastor John to get my email and I'll send those to you right away would you like to okay thank you so much <laughs> all right Thank you both. And for all of our chaperones, our counselors, and for all of our campers that went, we grateful. Thank you for your support, Katie. And, and uh, we pray that the seeds sown in their young lives will continue to bear fruit. Well, since we've, we've paused, give me just a couple of minutes. I said this is a significant day. Let me share a couple of things. Of course, we have a business meeting at 6 o'clock. Do we have any blues fans? Okay. Just what I need to say, of course, we will observe Father's Day, but we'll not have an evening service. To be tonight, but we'll be done in plenty of time. You who need to get home, just cannot wait to get home, home before 7 o'clock, okay? That's my All right? So if you'll be here tonight, don't be Presbyterians and stay home. And trust a committee to make your decision for you. Come to church. Be about it. Let us all work together. We'll make our decisions and everybody will be home in plenty of time. I have to admit it is kind of a significant event in St. Louis. Uh, something that's never happened to before. So, you know, I don't know a lot about hockey. In fact, I've suspected at times that hockey is a sin like fishing. You know, but, <laughs> but I think almost everybody fan now and I really would like to be able to, to win the cup obviously that would be a real plum for them and for our city so anyway we win right at six o'clock don't bring food tonight at six we'll call our business meeting to order do what God leads us to do and be home in plenty of time for the seven o'clock of the game okay I also mentioned to you two other things our southern Baptist Convention convenes their annual convention every year in June. This year in Alabama, and they'll be meeting tomorrow evening through Wednesday for them as they carry out the business of our convention. And of course, this is a uh, an important time in the life of our Southern Baptist Convention because several of our key agencies, including the International Mission Board, have new uh, new directors, uh, and so we'll be hearing from them. I'll try to share a report with you Wednesday night uh, of what I hear back from the convention that's meeting there. And then one last thing that I want to mention, we have a yard sale on June 22nd, weather 
okay? And, and that begins at 7 o'clock in the morning. For our newer members and those that may not know, uh, this is a yard sale that some of our folks began in ministry. Marianne, Kim, Mark, uh, Ed, and, and Pauline, bunches of people. Lots of people helped to make it happen. Somebody well, I didn't know Baptists had yard sales. We don't have yard sales for our church budget. But we do have yard sales for special projects because we have some folks who have the talents and the abilities and they wanted to do it. And over the past six or seven years, we have sent our on three mission trips out of town to fund the proceeds of this yard sale. We have sent six different occasions college students into a mission field and in, two, in three cases, they've actually been out of the country. And so, uh, you've accomplished a lot. Thank you. And it simply comes from donations from you. you. Don't go out to the community and ask for donations. It all comes from you as a church family. If you have something that you'd like to put in the yard sale, see Mary Ann Bennett, and she can answer any questions you have. But that's on Saturday the 22nd and be out here on our lot. So, um, okay. I appreciate your patience and all this information, but um, we needed to share it with you, certainly. Uh, what Debbie shared is important for uh, for supporting the children's home. And I do want to late in the summer, we actually have a representative of the Missouri Baptist Children's Home who will be in our service, and he'll be sharing something of a report. So uh, you can look forward to that. And, of course, for the coffee that's on the 29th, just a lot of good things going on in the life of our church. And while I'm at it, let me just also have already greet several folks visiting this morning. We are honored you're here. We pray God would bless you to worship together. Last Sunday night, I did a Bible study on worship and praise. And one of the things that I pointed out in that study is a difference, is praise is a performance. Worship, fellowship, actually interacting. Praise can be done anyway. Worship can only be done if God is present in this place. I believe, as Paul says, where two or three are gathered together, he is in the midst. There's more than two or three of us here. So I believe God is here with us. And so as we worship him, it's not only an opportunity to offer him our praises, but to fellowship with our Father. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. Johnny, lead us now. You would like to welcome those that are watching online and on Facebook Live. Thankful to uh, to Jim and, and Tony provide that technology. And Matt, that's been a, just a neat neat outreach and ministry. This week, Joanne Cornish's agent came to me, and uh, they said that uh, they were tired of her being back in the corner behind Tim, and, and you can't see and that. So we so we worked out a deal. Move her up front here. And Actually, she hates it, but we're, we're experimenting with some new technology. The uh, organ we have there, it's old and tired. and that Not the organist, the, the organ no. is oh. old and tired. Terrible. And so she's embracing the new technology and going to work. And hopefully you'll enjoy this because you'll be able to hear it better. Anyway, join as we sing our call to worship, or not our call to worship, uh, regular as we continue worship and song and praise. As we sing, soon and very soon. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon.
stand for our offertory hymn. Join as we sing, How Great is Our God.
As God is present with us, we worship him with our praise and our prayers. We have the opportunity now to worship him with our gratitude. Go to him together in prayer. And Larry Barker, would you word that for us, please? Thank you, God, that you sent your son, Father, to uh, die for our sins and forgive us all for our eternity, Father. Father, we just pray that you'll be with each one here this morning. If there's someone here that does not know you as a personal savior, God, that just guide and direct them to him. And just bless him and be with each one in this congregation. And be a gift as well as a giver. And we ask you things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 By the good gift of the Lord, I will testify that I belong to the mighty. I belong to the mighty God. I belong to the Holy One. Spared me. Justified by the good gift of the Lord, and I will testify that I belong to the Holy One. I belong to the Holy One. I belong to the Lord of all. I'll stand in Him and will not. I am justified by the good gift of the Lord. I will testify that I belong to the Lord of us. I belong to the Lord of us. 
Last week, Pastor uh, relayed a story of a, a lady that was uh, in churches that he uh, pastored before, and um, one of the uh, things that that, that uh, she said when she wakes up, she's already one blessing behind, and um, kind of a powerful thought, isn't it, that we're already behind in praising God and giving him the glory and that, and just for that. And so that reminded me this week, I had wrote a song a couple years ago that sort of taps into that um, thought. And uh, we're going to sing it this morning for you to sing along. It's, any of you like country music? There's a 12-step program for that. I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, this is a country kind of kind of you'll catch on, but uh, uh, please uh, focus on the words and the that is is this uh, catch on. Even before my day has begun, Thank you, John. And oh, I said that. It's very nice out front. We're back there behind the organ, you're sort of like the Holy Spirit. We know you're here, but we can't see you. So. Give me just a moment to share with you some 
prayer concerns. Uh, got a text message from Michael Boone last evening. Uh, he's in Mercy Hospital and was anticipating perhaps being in surgery even as we speak. Uh, they determined he had a bad gallbladder and it needed to come out. So uh, that sur surgery was scheduled this morning. We ask your prayers for Michael. Uh, and uh, speaking of prayer, uh, Cindy's going to have eye surgery Thursday, I believe, this week. And um, she's having to have some, some corrective surgery on one eye and cataract surgery on the other. But one of those will be done Thursday. And then also received word Friday evening that uh, Becky Bradham has been able to go home. Becky had been in the well, she's had for the last several years a recurring urinary tract infection. And they would give her antibiotics and send her home. Two months, three months later, she'd be back in the hospital. We started an IV, and so for the last five weeks, she's been on an IV antibiotic, which is much stronger. And uh, so anyway, she's gone home. Now they're continuing that therapy. They're a home health nurse to help her with that. But please continue to pray for her as well. Those are things that I'm aware of. Uh, Sarah Southard also had a concern this week, and uh, with, she might have clot in her leg. It turned out not to be. We're grateful for that. And then, as I mentioned, we have several of our folks traveling, some of uh, the large coming back from, uh, from, and then other folks that are just on vacation. I can't, I lost count how many of our folks sent me a message, called me this week, said, hey, I won't be there Sunday. We're going to be going here. It is a year. So pray that God would be with, uh, uh, with those as they travel. Would you join me in prayer? Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we pause. And first, Lord, we pause to acknowledge that you are present in this place. That enables us to fellowship with you in worship. And I pray for each of us, our members, our friends, our guests, that we have had and will continue to have true worship experience. Lord, there is so much for which we want to thank you. And so we offer praise how you have blessed us, how you've cared for us, how you've kept us safe and well. We thank you. For those of us that have issues, concerns, either for spiritual or physical needs, Lord, we pray that your hand upon them would do for them even more than doctors and nurses can do. We ask, Lord, you'd be with those folks that are traveling, vacations or uh, on this trip to Europe, Lord, we just pray for travel mercies and care. We thank you for bringing our children back safe this past week. And we ask, Lord, now that you would guide us, that as we seek to and celebrate this Pentecost Sunday, we might come to more deeply appreciate the presence, the power, and the person of your Holy Spirit. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let me slip up here now. I'll join John and welcome to those who may be watching on Facebook. Hope some of our members are getting to do that who can't be with us this morning. And uh, again, we hope that they have a safe trip coming back. Pentecost was celebrated from the earliest Testament times. In fact, God gave in of seven major feasts or festivals during the course of their year. Pentecost was one of the three festivals that required a Jew to live anywhere near the city of Jerusalem that she could celebrate it at the temple. So, let me see if I can get this to work. All right. So, Pentecost, actually from Pente, 50. 50 days after Passover. So they would count 49 days, and on the 50th day, then they would celebrate Pentecost. It was called the Festival of Week because there were seven weeks and a day between Passover and Pentecost. And the following Passover was referred to as the High Holy Sabbath. So it was related to the agricultural needs. Because the first thing that was harvested in the spring was barley. 
Then a little later in the spring, the wheat. And the festival of weeks was usually a time when the harvest was coming in. And so of it as a harvest festival. And of course it has significance as we think about what happened in that Pentecost. So here's what in the Old Testament says in the book of Deuteronomy. You shall count seven weeks for your You shall begin to count seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle in grain. Then you shall celebrate the feast of to the Lord your God. And so for Jewish people from the time of Sinai on, certainly in the first century world, and even to today, the time of Pentecost is an important situation. In fact, Paul over in Acts, or, or Luke, me about Paul, Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he would not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be back in Jerusalem and festivals. So that's the importance of Pentecost. Now, for us to understand the significance of Pentecost, of course, in the New Testament, to Acts 2. And I'd invite you to take a Bible or use yours and turn with me to the second chapter of Acts and permit me to read the to your Bible to you. To our guests, there should be a Bible in the pew rack. Read one, and certainly I would welcome you to turn this. This resurrection. Before his ascension, there were several times I talked with them. And these conversations were to prepare them for what would come. And then if we back up, if you recall in the Gospel of John, in those six chapters that John gives to that last night, the, the trial and the crucifixion of Jesus, Jesus said to his disciples in the upper room that night, about the person and Holy Spirit and anywhere else in the gospel in the Bible. See the Holy Spirit is early Genesis in creation, the Spirit of God moved in the face of the water, we are told. So the Spirit is always present. And occasionally someone will mistakenly assume that Pentecost is a celebration of the birth of the Holy Spirit, like Christmas is a celebration of the physical birth of Jesus. And that's not the Holy Spirit has existed from before the beginning, just as did Jesus Christ. And of course, you read the prologue to John's Gospel, and he makes very clear. Christmas was not when Jesus began. Jesus pre-existed our world. So God as a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, goes before time. And so Pentecost is a celebration of the beginning of the Holy Spirit. It is not a celebration even of the beginning of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but it is a celebration of a specific function of the Holy Spirit that until Jesus died on Calvary, required. We read then beginning in the verse, and when the day of Pentecost had come, all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues distributing themselves as they rested on one of them, and they were all filled with the Spirit and with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were bewildered, because they were each one hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, why are not all these speaking Galileans? And who is it? We each hear them in our own language to which we were born. Medes and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, to Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans, Arabs, we hear them in our own tongue speaking of the deeds of God. And they continued in amazement and great perplexity into one another, what was this man? And so from that, Luke tells us about the miracle of that particular Pentecost. Why were the disciples there? Because as Jews, they were expected to be there. They had remained in Jerusalem after the ascension of Jesus. And in fact, Jesus had told them that they were to remain 
Jerusalem until they received power. Pentecost should be understood as the reversal of Babel. You remember the Tower of Babel from early in, in Genesis? And it says that in Babel, God confounded their language so that they could not interact with each other. Pentecost, on the other hand, had everybody hearing the gospel in their native language. He did it in his native tongue, that is, the tongue of their home. And I have always admired bilingual, bilingual people who come from other cultures to speak English, and English fluently, but retain the ability to speak in their native language, okay? And so there were people in Jerusalem who could speak Greek fluently because Greek was the universal language. And there were certainly those in Jerusalem who could speak Latin because like Greek, it was very broad language. But they weren't hearing it in Greek. They weren't hearing it in Latin. They weren't hearing it even in Hebrew. They were hearing it in the tongue that was spoken in the that was the impact of Pentecost. Now, Rhonda and I disagree on this. Rhonda wants to say that Pentecost is a speech miracle. And it's unfortunate through the years that some people have avoided observing Pentecost because of confusion about the issue of speaking in tongues. Galilee is a totally different experience. Paul dealt with 1 Corinthians than what happened at Pentecost. Because glossolalia is speaking in unknown tongues, Pentecost was speaking in very known tongues. But here's the thing, Rhonda. There were fewer people speaking than there were people listening. Everybody listening in their own language. Okay? So there were 11 apostles at that time. And those with them, if they were impacted by the Holy Spirit to begin speaking... More people were hearing it in more different versions than they were able to speak. So we don't need to be afraid of Pentecost. And God help us, folks. We don't need to be afraid of the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Okay? It is to our regret, I think, to our indictment that historically we of Baptists, as Baptists have not given enough emphasis to the person and work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have suffered because of that. Okay? So Pentecost was an experience of equipping the saints. Jesus had told them that they were to share the gospel, but Pentecost also empowered the New Testament church, gave them power to fulfill the commission. What was the commission? Go ye therefore nations. That is everybody's language, okay? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to whatever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always. Those early apostles could not do that without the person of the Holy Spirit giving them the empowerment to do it. And so, we think about Pentecost, well, and for some reason I'm frozen up. Franny, can you move me one forward? Okay, thank you. Whoops. Okay, so I want to briefly share with you this morning about Pentecost as a promise, power, and a presence. Okay? And apparently you're going to have to, to move me because it's doing it. I know you've had problems with it. Thank you. So if we go to the next slide, the promise, okay? It was as they were watching Jesus go up into heaven that the, that the angel reminded them. But they recalled, and John particularly recalled, what Jesus had said about the Holy Spirit in the upper room. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all I said to you. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So Pentecost was a promise. It was the fulfillment of what Jesus had said, had said to the disciples in the upper room that they were going to receive. But it was also a power. So if we 
So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. And notice I underlined the word authority. Go on to, but you will receive power, and I've underlined power, and I'll show you why in a moment. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. The Father, oops, the Father has fixed by His own authority, Luke writes, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And there are two Greek words that you see at the bottom. One of them literally translates authority. God has the authority, He has the ability, so that we can share the gospel with us. It is the first task of First Baptist Church of Oakville to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in every way we can, with every one and time we can. Okay? Anybody that disagrees with that needs to find a different church because that's job one. Everything we do should support in some way or feed to the task. It is an unfinished task because not everyone is a Christian. Do you know that? That shouldn't be a surprise. Go to Arnold. Not everyone in Arnold is a Christian either. So our job is not yet done, but it's a job we cannot do on our own. So we have the power of the Holy Spirit indwelling us, and we also have God's authority translated through the Holy Spirit. God has given permission to anybody to talk to about Jesus. Think about that, okay? If you're in a at, or at home, or you're out in the coffee shop, or just talking with someone, in a conversation, you have the opportunity to share with them that you're a Christian and what it means to have Jesus Christ in your life. You don't have to stop and pray and say, God, would it be all right if I talked to them about Jesus? He's already said, you are authorized, and the Holy Spirit gives you the power to do that. So Pentecost comes with, okay, Jesus had made in the upper room, and that promise was fulfilled at Pentecost. There also was a power. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But there's also a presence to be celebrated. Okay? When I was a boy, my father's parents were still living. Everybody has the blessing of enjoying their grandparents. I did, on both sides. But my, my dad's parents had a large family. When we'd get together for a holiday, Grandma would always sit at the kitchen with the kids, and Grandpa would sit in the dining room with the adults. Okay? And you always made the transition when you were invited to the dining room table to eat instead of staying in the kitchen. Okay? But we were arguing. Now, I know you can't imagine grandkids doing that, and I would never argue. I was whispering out loud, okay? <laughs> About who would get to sit next to Grandma, okay? Grandma only had two sides. And so as four or five of us were arguing about what we were going to get to sit next to Grandma in the kitchen, Grandma just finally got frustrated with the thing, and she said, I think I'll just put my plate up in the middle table and set my chair up there and I'll sit in the middle of the table and then you can all sit next to grandma. Well, everybody laughed, you know. I think she was really tempted. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> here's the point, okay? Says, I will be with you. Now, if he's with us up here, then he's closer to you than he is to y'all, right? Okay. If you think of it in geographical terms, God is present with us because He dwells within us. The Holy Spirit is the indwelling presence of God in the heart of every believer. And so when I pray, I don't have to shout for God to hear me. He is within me. And so Pentecost is a celebration of the presence of God in 
lives and what that means. Jesus again, quoting from John, I will ask the Father and He will give you another helper that He may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth the world cannot receive. Do you hear that? A lost person doesn't have the Holy Spirit within them, but a saved person does. And there are some Christians, God bless them, that misunderstand. And they say, well, you can be a Christian, but the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in you until you have a saint. No, the Bible is the Holy Spirit, and He comes into the life of a believer when you open your faith to Jesus Christ. It is not something you have to earn, pay for, or achieve. It is God's gift to us. As Jesus referred to it, it is a gift of God's grace. So, because it does not see Him or know Him, but you know Him, because He abides with you and will be you. We think about the Holy Spirit, who He is, what He does what He means in our lives. God is present with us. God gives us what we need every day for what we endeavor to do in His name. And He is there to comfort us. If I'm hurting, if I'm facing a difficult situation, if something's going on in my life that uh, I just don't know how to handle it, I don't have to go looking for God. I just need to acknowledge His presence in the person of the Holy Spirit. And God is with me. So, what can be possible, Pentecost made available. If Jesus Christ had not died for our sin, the Holy Spirit would not inhabit hearts. But when we received Jesus Christ and the gift He gave us from Calvary's cross, then the Holy Spirit becomes present in our lives. And that's the presence that Jesus promised. What Catholic made possible, Pentecost made available. It goes on to say later uh, on Pentecost that Peter preached, okay, Peter, and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So then those who had received his word were baptized, and that day there were added about 3,000 souls. You remember the first slide, celebrating Pentecost, beginning of the harvest. In terms of the New Testament church, that's what Pentecost was. Reaching, as we're told, from the days following Pentecost, the weeks, the months, even the years following Pentecost, the church continued to bring in the harvest that was begun that day. Look around at those folks around you who have received Jesus Christ as their Savior as you. You can celebrate that you with them are part of the harvest that God promised, that Jesus died for, and that the Holy Spirit made possible. So as we conclude today, let me ask you to join me in prayer. If you're here this morning and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, the honest truth is you don't have much to celebrate today. Because Pentecost is a celebration of what comes to us, I should say who comes to us, after we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. If you've not done that, you can do that today. Perhaps you're here as a Christian, and you've never quite understood what the Holy Spirit means. That some of you thought that represented something that you were not comfortable with or didn't understand. There's no reason to fear the person and the work of the Holy Spirit to teach you. And so as you listen to the Holy Spirit today as He speaks to your heart, He has a message for you. You say, well, I'm already a Christian. I'm already a church member. What do I need to do? Let the Lord speak to your heart. Okay? didn't come just to see you. He came to bless you. So as we pray, let the Holy Spirit each of your hearts. And if there's a decision you need to share with us, you need to come and public acknowledge your Christ. You want to join with our church in any way we receive, we receive members or some blessing in your life or some need in your life and you just want to come to this altar and let me pray with you, rejoice with you. I'd be honored to do that. Let's pray. 
Dear God, our Heavenly Father, ask that your will be done. Heart life. And Lord, if indeed there is someone here who has a decision to make today, encourage them that decision not only to honor and please you, but it may be an encouragement to someone else who just needs someone to lead the way. So Lord, I if there's someone here and they're debating a decision that you might encourage them and empower them so that they can take their stand for Christ today. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks are going to lead us as we sing together our hymn of invitation. Lord, I'm coming home. How appropriate. Thank you, John. As we sing it together, let me invite you to stand. If you need to come and share something with me, I bid you come and do that in Jesus' name. Thanks, Tim. I'm coming Thank you for being here and a part of this worship experience in the presence of God today. Thank you for allowing me to share with you why Pentecost Sunday deserves to be celebrated in every Baptist church across our land. And if you are here as a friend or guest, thank you for coming back, worshiping with us and giving us the blessing and the privilege of your fellowship. As we go from this place, as you go your separate ways, let me just remind you, deacons, we have a meeting at 5 o'clock, business meeting at 6 o'clock, and the puck doesn't drop till 7. So please come. <laughs> let us transact the Lord's business for our church, and then you'll be home in plenty of time tonight. And I'm like you. Go Blues. You know, I'd like to see them be able to win it. You bet. Uh, but uh, be in prayer for those who are traveling, some of our folks, and a few of them are back, and we're glad they are. Mike, lead us in our benediction, please, sir. Uh, thank you, Lord, for bringing us all here today. Uh, worship you. Please help us all home safely. Go Blues. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>